Hello and welcome to a very cluttered man cave here at Wistful Vistas in beautiful suburban San Diego, California. Actually North County and uh, we've gotten through our little bit of a rainy uh, spot there that we had and looking at sunshine over the next few days. However, we're going to do a couple of interior type of shots today. By the way, I hope 2020 is turning out to be an unfoldingly great year for everyone who sees this video. Uh, I am finally going to succumb to all the pressure and install a tail tidy on the Tuono. Tail tidy and a uh, turn signal kit by a company called Moto Dynamics. Moto Dynamics was recommended to me by consensus more or less of uh, Facebook people. So we're going to give that a try. Uh, we're going to start with an unboxing. Oh yes, an unboxing. So we're going to do the easy stuff first and uh, you'll see what comes in the box and uh, perhaps it can be a help for you in some of your uh, projects and should you uh, by coincidence happen to have a Tuono and uh, buy the Moto Dynamics kit, maybe it'll help you a whole lot. But uh, and in general, I, I does hope it is, does prove of assistance. Thanks. Step one for this entire process is to move the uh, connection block, I'm going to call it. I don't know what the official term is for it. But there's two spades on either side that slide up through these little uh, housings here. And we uh, grab this guy and push him to the side. Here's the little uh, spades that it connects to. So we've got that out of the way. Uh, let's move on. We've got to take some uh, nuts and bolts out. Will these show up? I'm not entirely sure. Can you see down? Can you see down in there? How about uh, how about that one? <laughs> I don't know if you can or not, but that's where it is. So we've got to try and grab that guy. That uh, does not look like it's going to be too easy to get to. So that's the next shot. I'm going to spare you that. But uh, one, two bolts corresponding to. Uh, down here under the uh, device and then we've got a little beauty washer here that uh, takes the other one out. So stand by. We're going to get that done. Do it off camera. Forgot to say this is a 10 millimeter and uh, to really grab it a multi-point uh, boxed in is kind of nice to reach down inside there. You've got to really go down into the depths of the thing. So 10 millimeter and a regular old big honkin' uh, Phillips head there. Okay, I've got these uh, two little screws out down in here. I don't know, perhaps you can see the hole that uh, that goes through and um, uh, it's difficult to reach. <laughs> okay, so if you have, uh, I don't have large hands, but uh, it is difficult to reach. I advise you to use and have st on standby one of these, a little magnetic grabber. They don't have far to go, but you can get down in there and, and get them. That's two out of the three. The third one is uh, located up underneath here. A little grommet there, and it's buried way in there. But uh, you take the grommet out with a little tiny flat-headed screwdriver. Uh, before I do that, I am going to remove these two uh, rear turn signals. And I debated about keeping these uh, two turn signals or going with the fully integrated one. I'm going to keep the two turn signals, uh, I think. Uh, reason being is we have so many distracted drivers here in San Diego. And I think uh, if I just rely on these back underneath here, they may be a little too hidden and uh, might not call enough attention to the fact that I do want to turn one way or the other. So I'm first going to attempt wiring this up uh, and retaining these, uh, the tail tidy, and retaining these two uh, rear turn signals. So those are next to remove, a couple of small uh, Allens, metric Allens of course, and um, you also remove uh, small little tiny little Phillips head screws on this guy right there. So get that done off camera. Little baby Phillips, little, little baby Phillips to grab uh, this guy and back it out. But uh, 
Just do it on both sides. Little one, probably the smallest that you have. I'm just gonna say something about this screw that's hidden under the grommet way up here. It was in very, very tight. And for a few moments, I thought I was defeated and uh, couldn't break it and wondering what I was gonna do. But it, it does break out, but you've gotta go back to a, a pretty good size Phillips to get it. Uh, it's not out yet, but uh, that was my experience there. Here's the culprit, uh, that one down under that was very hard to get out. I'm not sure how well this will show up, but uh, when they put it in there at the factory, my guess they use power tools and they torqued it in uh, pretty well. It's uh, not in the best of shape and that's what uh, was difficult to get out, but it did come out. <laughs> Thank goodness. Here she goes. The old tailpiece is off. Weighty thing. Uh, I always thought it looked, <laughs> as far as tailpieces go, I actually thought it looked uh, rather okay. But did come off. You have to uh, undo this uh, little connector here. Uh, it might be a two-person job because as you take it off, it wants to fall down and scratch and hit, yourself, hit your foot and things like that. But it's off. Okay, so now we have to, uh, I think what we have to do is transfer some bits um, from this one, which is the old one, to the new one. Okay, stand by. We're going to find that out. Okay, a little pre-assembly here, mounting the uh, new tail light um, onto the back of your new tail tidy license plate holder. Uh, two small little threaded screws and you've got to thread the uh, new light uh, wires through the included um, hole here. Okay, won't take long. Hey, just a quick intro, we're back for day two here. I don't have a full day, strange, isn't it? <laughs> I don't have a full day in the man cave to finish up these projects all at one time, so I hope you'll bear with me. The other caveat or the other concern I have for people who uh, have the patience to endure these uh, videos that I do is being very much an amateur, getting the camera angles right and trying to impart as much information as I can to someone who may be able to use it. Uh, and I will add a very quick comment there that if that is a problem for you, please contact me. Contact me via the uh, YouTube comment section and I will try to clarify and, and clear that up. But I do know that sometimes moving the camera around and things uh, does make it a bit hard. hard hard to follow. So bear with us. Today we're going to install the, um, I finished the tail tidy, at least the pre-assembly of it. So today we're going to install the uh, Moto Dynamics uh, sequential LED uh, rear brake light and uh, should be able to get this done in one uh, swell swoop, one fell swoop here. Bear with us. We're going to do it. To get to everything, we need to uh, remove the OEM rear tail light. I have to have access to some screws that run along here that are hidden. So I need to remove the uh, beautiful tail assembly back here on the Tuono, as well as the uh, seat. That involves, uh, to get at that, that involves also removing these here. So I don't think I'm going to film all that happening. We've got one, two, three, four uh, Allens, oh, five, six, uh, including the seat. So we've got about six Allens to get to. So I don't think I'm gonna do that on film. That's uh, beyond boring. So I'm just going to take those off and then we'll come back when the back of the bike is exposed and hopefully we can get to all those things. Okay, the tail light, the OEM tail light assembly is out. I'm ready to put the replacement one in here. Uh, have to remove these uh, little grommets here. They have to be recycled back into the uh, new tail light. So 
Not sure how well that's going to go uh, on camera, but black on black on black. But these come off and go into these tabs. Next steps. Okay, I want to show the uh, wiring installation here. Um, takes a while to sort of uh, figure it out. There is no splicing. Have lots of extra wires. My next challenge is going to be trying to tuck it all back underneath here. But it all does uh, it all does plug and play. So uh, it it works. It's just a little bit confusing following the routing. And they give you a choice uh, of using or not using these resistors. I've put the resistors in line and I've checked the operation of the machine and uh, it does work well. I get the flash, I get the sequential turning and all that other kind of goodness. But uh, I don't know what I would get without those resistors, but I'm going to leave them there. So, okay, now to button her back up, and uh, we'll see how it all turns out. So, as I mentioned, uh, going back together again nicely, but there's a little hole down here uh, that's left after the construction. And I'll put a little tape over the top of that before I close it up. No sense having, it's amazing how much dust and stuff can come up through different things that you leave out. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the wiring is uh, fiddly. I'm going to call it fiddly. And I've been doing some electrical taping uh, here to make sure that uh, there's no potential of something coming loose and getting a, wire, a bare wire touching another bare wire. So doing my best to reroute it. Again, very boring. And uh, I'll get back as I get closer to having the thing all buttoned up. Incidentally, check the lights and all, and they work quite well. So it so often happens that the thing you expect uh, to be the biggest hassle is not the biggest hassle. You discover another one. But on this uh, side panel, on the right-hand side panel here, I'm going to remove that sticker, by the way. There is a little uh, rubber over center plug. I'm going to try and get it in close up view here, right at the end. And it uh, pushes in. The way you install this, you have to kind of roll it into place from back to front. And it pushes in right here. And it's. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's hard. <laughs> First of all, I had to find out what it was to get it out. It's not immediately obvious, but I did get it out, and maybe this side view will show you how it goes in. And uh, this hook will show you how you have to slide it in and drop it in there. But anyhow, that turned out to be uh, a good 20 minutes or so worth of work because I didn't want to mess something up too bad. So, just a little warning. Hang in there. All of these little bolts that uh, <clears throat> run along here on the fairing reinstall have uh, shoulders on them. You can see a little uh, shoulder there. So make sure you don't mix those up because those uh, sit down through the top and hold them in place. The other thing I would say when you're redoing this fairing uh, Normally, you like to do things maybe in a star pattern, but on this fairing, I think, run linearly down, let the material grow into position as you put it in. The other thing that I'm doing, since these are very seldom uh, released, is I'm putting them on with a little blue walked, Loctite. Walktite. <laughs> you can't walk with Loctite. you hurt yourself, but uh, a little blue uh, Loctite. So, uh, they are more or less on there for a long, long time before you need to take them off, and you want to make sure they don't vibrate out. Another word of caution, I have my battery charger on here. Another word of caution is that you have the battery terminals right here, so be aware as you're uh, slinging around wrenches and things like that that you don't short out those battery terminals. Okay, going to get back to work. Last comment to make on the uh, fairing reinstall which fits pretty snugly. You have a lot of uh, tabs that you've got to align, so make sure as you're putting it back on that you catch those tabs, especially a couple up under here 
and a couple around this uh, piece at the back. So make sure you catch those tabs and don't know if this is going to show out, uh, show up or not, but this pesky little guy right here, you got to get him to line up with his hole and then you push this pin in and that uh, then spreads the jaws on the other side to hold it in place. That, uh, what, that, pardon me, let me bring the mic back. Let's start again. This pesky little guy right here, you push that pin in and that spreads the jaws out on the other side to hold it in place. Not sure if, not sure if you are able to see it here. I'm going to point it out right there. But uh, that little guy uh, took a lot of discovery. So just be aware that <laughs> that's one of the fiddlier bits. I like to use that word. But uh, take care of that guy. I'm going to push that in, and the fairings will be on. And I'm going to then reinstall the carbon fiber fairings on the side. OK, over here to the left-hand side of the machine. This one, as I said before, is a little sweet potato. This just goes in. Uh, not a lot of uh, difficulty putting this one in at all. Once again, uh, three screws to screws or bolts. I'm not too sure what the uh, exactly right uh, nomenclature would be here to hold it in. And we are done with this side. <laughs> OK, full disclosure. Uh, Remember I was talking about little tabs and things that hold it together? Well, I had uh, put those three screws on and then I'm not sure these will show up, but there's uh, three little tabs that have to, the piece actually goes on and slides underneath and I had uh, very successfully managed to ignore those. So, hey, uh, I just want the average dude like me uh, to understand that uh, this stuff does happen and there are these little details. Maybe I'll save some poor guy from missing that himself. So off camera, lie those up again and put those screws again. Uh, line up the tabs and put the screws back in. Okay, she fits. I got those uh, tabs back in there. The piece goes in, up, and over. And uh, it's just one of those their little uh, quarter inch maybe tabs that grab under the bodywork and make it uh, all uh, surprisingly solid considering it's all plastic, but uh, <laughs> detail easily missed. So it just goes to show you, even the regular guys can make a mistake like that. So uh, she's on, that's on there. I'm gonna put the uh, seat back on and uh, we're gonna fire it up and I'll show you folks how this uh, taillight system works. By the way, uh, as I said earlier, I was going to, on the tail tidy, use the stock uh, turn signals, but the uh, Moto uh, Dynamic uh, turn signals work really well. So I, I feel confident in, in just using those as they came with the bike. I think you'll see what I mean. Stand by. One thing I did want to show you before I uh, button it up and, and fire it up for everybody is uh, I'm a big fan of these, um, I guess you would call it a little hidden license plate uh, stuff holder. I don't know. There's a, I'm sure there's a fine technical term for it. But I was uh, worried when I first put this on that I wouldn't be able to save this, but I drilled a couple of new holes and uh, was able to reattach this. This is such a handy thing to have. Uh, these machines have no, they used to, used to have some space back under the tail here to put things into, but of course that's all gone. So I put my uh, insurance papers and uh, quite often, I don't know, some of you may have uh, garage door openers. I'll put my garage door opener in there as well. And uh, it's just a great place to store them. And you don't, uh, some people say, well, just put it in your pocket. And uh, yeah, but uh, then you forget you've got it in your pocket and walk off and um, then the next time you're out riding, the policeman asks for your uh, identity and, and insurance. But it works great. It takes just that little key there, sits under there, and I was able to save it. So couldn't recommend it more. I will uh, put the uh, name of it down when I uh, post up this video. Um, I'm not. I think I got it from a company called Twisted Throttle. Throttle. Twist. Twisted Throttle. Twisted Throttle. But. Uh, 
really a fan of it. So it's on there, I got that going. That would be another tool that I did use, a drill and a drill motor. So we're going to have to trust that uh, that uh, illustration worked there anyway. I'm going to walk up and put on the brakes again and do the turn signal again, but uh, somehow or another the shutter speed is matched with the signal going to the LEDs here. So it looks like they're flickering. Just imagine for our purposes here that they are steady state. They are steady state on. So I'm going to do the uh, turn signal, uh, excuse me, brakes first and then uh, left and right turn signal. So stand by a sec. <laughs> 